What's going on, everybody? Ed0626, and I hope you guys are all having a great day today. Got some Battlefield 5 gameplay in the background for you guys to enjoy as I go down memory lane and I talk about some of my favorite things that I enjoyed about Battlefield 5 as the uh, as the lifespan of the game has now pretty much come to an end. I mean, they're not updating it anymore. Odds are, in a couple of months, player bases will shrink down to almost next to nothing. I wouldn't be surprised. And I personally haven't even played this game that much. It's just that ever since the my videos I made on Provence and Al Mirage, I just... I have had no urgency to play this game. And it just... It's not that I don't like the game. I mean, the game is okay at best. It's just that I've had more fun playing games like Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 4. Games that I feel like I have... They just have that fun factor. Like I said, they just have that fun factor that this game doesn't have for me for some reason but like I said we're gonna go down in memory lane and we're gonna talk about some of my favorite Battlefield 5 moments throughout the lifespan of this game which to be honest with you there aren't many of them and the first one that I could recall was Mercury Mercury is by far one of if not my favorite map in, in this game it's just such a great map I just have so much fun playing it. I like the flow of the map. I think the map is by far one of the more visually appealing of the bunch. It's just an overall solid map. I truly think Mercury and Merida are really slept on. Merida was also a fantastic map and I enjoy playing that as well, but I, I, I enjoy it slightly less than I do Mercury. I just think Mercury was the epitome of what a Battlefield 5 or a battlefield map in general should be. It had great flow, offered a variety of different, you know, plat uh, of encounters, verticality, um, just just good stuff, just good stuff, and that's what Mercury offered for me. And I, I will go on and say that it is still Battlefield 5's best map, if not, it's the top two. Now, as we move on, I think that was like the summer of 20. 18 or something like that or summer of 2019 I don't even fucking know anymore this game is just such a fucking mess that I don't I forgot the entire timetable of this game but whenever Mercury came out it was a solid game it, it made the game a little bit more fun to play and I would argue that the next time that this game felt fun to play was I don't know if some people will argue with this but I think the majority of the community will agree I have a slightly different opinion of it but I'll get into this anyway is when Operation Underground came out. Mer Operation Metro is by far one of the most iconic and hectic and probably for some, some of the most fun they've ever had in the Battlefield franchise. And when Operation Underground, the Metro remake, or the retro, uh, the Metro reimagined uh, map, was going to come to the game, I think a lot of people were excited. I was excited but skeptical. And we play the map and it, it felt good. You know, the, it doesn't feel any different from Metro. That really doesn't offer anything different, other than the fact that there's a little bit more of a um, there's a little bit more of an, a focus on outdoor combat, which is good. You know, it's not so much taking place in the subway itself. Yeah, there's a little there's ways where you can get stuck in the subway, and there might be some flanking routes here, here and there, but. It, it was definitely an okay map. I enjoyed it a lot. You know, obviously there are people that are getting 60, 70, 80 kills at times on that map. Hell, I, there might even be someone that's gotten 100 or more. It's just a map that's a great kill farm. You know, that's basically what people use that for. If you want to do challenges regarding uh, kills and weapons and all that stuff, that's, that's the map that you go to. I wouldn't be surprised if that's the map that most people go to. And then this is where the game really, really felt fun to play, at least for me. And that was the Pacific. And I love Pacific Storm, and I love Iwo Jima. They're just two, again, two of some of the best maps that this game has brought since release. A lot of the base maps are okay, but they're not really all that great. There's nothing really special about them. And they don't feel like World War II. Iwo Jima is the most World War II feeling map of the entire game. It, I've seen plenty of movies about Iwo Jima. Um, 
it gave me I think I said this I might have said this in my review the the, the trailer got me so hyped and it gave me movie vibes that's what it did it gave me movie vibes of that game uh, uh, of uh, from the game and uh, specifically uh, Letters from Iwo Jima, which is a very good movie if you guys have not checked it out. It's so good. But it's hard to explain, man. It's just there, there were some setbacks with the with the map itself. I, I, there's always going to be some setbacks, but I still think Iwo Jima is one of the most World War II feeling of all the maps in the game. And again, Paci Pacific Storm kind of gave you that island hopping vibe. And then, of course, Wake Island came, which... I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't all that big on Wake Island. I think I even went out and said that you know, of all the maps, this game was probably of all the maps that they released for this one. This one was like the most. This one let me down. It kind of let me down. I mean, I don't like the World War II setting for this map. It's just not good. It's not a solid. It's not the way the mechanics of this game work. It's just I don't find this map to be appealing in this game. I'm sure in Battlefield 3 it was fantastic. I'm sure in previous games it was great. But Wake Island and Battlefield 5 didn't really do it for me, and that kind of gave me like a uh, kind of gave me a lull moment with the game. Solomon Islands was another uh, map which I thoroughly enjoyed. You know, it gave me a variety of different types of battlefields, from the jungle to the more open areas of the map. And the I think it was A and B side, I think. So, and as you progress deeper and deeper into the jungle, it just became cool. You know, if if I was going to be honest, I think the overall the entire the entire Pacific, I think the general consensus of the community would agree, is the highlight of this game. Not including the 5. Point, uh, the 5.2 update. The 5.2 update pretty much took all goodwill that this game had and fucking ab obliterated it. it. It was tough. And playing any map in this game and, playing and using any gun in this game was tough for a very, 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 very long time. And that's pretty much it, man. That that's honestly it. I mean, there are a couple of other instances that where I have enjoyed this game. I, I think the most latest one is Provence '64. I'll I still will go out on record saying that that is it is by far the most visually appealing, next to Mercury. I think Provence '64 is so beautiful, and of course, it gives you a very familiar play style. That's Goldman Railway. Someone actually asked me in a, in my uh, Provence 64, I was like, do you think it's just a Goldman remake? I said, I don't, I don't think it's directly a Goldman remake. I think it's directly inspired by Goldman, but I don't think it's a complete remake. Because if it was a remake, they would have had like some sort of train tracks or some shit. They would have done something a little bit more. Uh, I think they would have made it bigger. I think that's what they would have done. Then again, most people don't really fight in the. Uh, don't most people don't really fight in the fields of uh, Provence anyway. And then Almarge comes, and, it, you know, to me, Almarge is anything special. I mean, same thing with Al-Sundan. It's, it's okay. The map's okay. I think it only works on certain game modes, more so than um, others. Uh, it's definitely a meat grinder, Almarge. I mean, I made the joke about a Achibaba being the meat grinder of Battlefield 1. And, uh, of course, Operation Metro and... Operation Locker are definitely the meat grinders of Battlefield 4. Al Marge is by far probably the most meat grinder map of Battlefield 5. That's how I uh, that's how I compare the two. But even with Al Sundan, I mean, I, Al Sundan wasn't anything special to me, man. That was like another low point I had during this game when Al Sundan launched fully. Because Conquest sucked on it, but Breakthrough was relatively fun. It cut the map down significantly from a lot of worthless space that a lot of people I think don't really have much of use for. Again, I'll say it again. Half the map is useful because there are objectives there. The other half of the map could be used for flanking but unless you have some sort of vehicle you're literally running 300 something me uh, meters or however whatever, however far that from one flag to the other from A to I think it's E or F that you have to go to. I just don't think I don't think the map was that impressive. I think a lot of people were excited for it. I didn't find the map to be that impressive, in all honesty. And of course, there is the um, what else? The what is the other map? I think another map that I think kind of flew under the radar was um, Lafotten Islands. But that's another map where I just kind of feel indifferent for. Again, it's not really a map that's like 
showcased much because it's not a map that's in the main rotation of the game. It's only for TDM and Squad Conquest. So a lot of people were kind of iffy on that, but that's kind of like it for me, man. That's like my main... That's it, man. Like That's how I feel about Battlefield 5's and some of the high points and some of the low points I had in this game's lifespan. I mean, I would go and say, I would go from the very beginning and say how I felt about this game, but to be honest with you, nothing about the game excited me other than, like, a couple of maps that I had already played. Uh, like, Rotterdam was good, Devastation was, like, okay at best. Uh, fuck, I don't even know any of the other ma maps in this game. They're just so forgettable compared to some of the other ones that we have gotten that are better, like Mercury, like Merida like Iwo Jima, like Pacific Storm, like Provence. You know, there, there's just an array of other maps that you can play that are better than so many of the base maps in this game. And I think from that alone, the game was already setting a bad precedent. And I think as time went on and these maps came out, I think some good faith was restored with the community. And of course, I don't know if I'd say it's all gone or not, but I don't know. It's just hard to say. That's pretty much it, guys. You know, talk, tell me in the comment section what were some of the high points and some of the low points for you in uh, Battlefield 5. I mean, I've gone, I think any, anything anyone with a brain can say, or most people with a brain can say the 5.2 update was by far some of the worst that they had ever seen. But uh, give me something a little bit more unique than that. Give me something like, oh, you know, give me like maps that you were excited for, or maps that you didn't like that came to the game, or you know, gun mechanics, gun releases, that sort of th that sort of deal. Give me something a little bit more in depth, because we all know most of the community hates the 5.2 update, and this and would have rather it would have rather it would been completely wiped off the face of the earth. So that's all I got to say for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, follow me on all the social media and streaming platforms you see down in the description below. And uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, man. I'm sure a lot of people are new here. I've seen a lot of new faces come over the last couple of months, and uh, I'm glad that you guys are here. So if you want to see more, by all means, subscribe. And uh, have a good day. Peace out. Take care of yourselves. And most importantly, take care of each other.